Hey everyone, it's Joe Nazeus here from The Automator, and today we got a really, really cool extension that will allow you to basically change the speed of almost, it seems like, any video on any website you're doing. Um, also for both Firefox or at least Chrome is what we looked at. And uh, let me back up a step here real quick because we were on a client call doing some consulting with one of our clients, and I forget how it came up, but he's like, he mentioned something, yeah, yeah, oh, let me stop this because he's like, I'm watching your courses but I play them at a faster speed and I'm like, wait a minute, we, we don't know how to do that. What? And so this is my point to you guys. Also, this is why you talk to other people, right? Just remember, yeah. we, not everyone knows everything. Um, and right. just blown away, we found this tool. This is going to walk us through how to use it and how power it's crazy powerful and it's free. So those are two right. of my favorite combinations. <laughs> yeah. Now our, our courses, the way how we host them, I don't know if it allows us to change the speed. It doesn't. Probably they do no. some. It doesn't. No, that's okay. why, I, you know, that's why right. I'm like, okay. other hero members, you know, or I'm sorry, right. other customers had asked, how do you change the speed? And we're like, sorry, that's right. not. Right, okay, yeah. Okay, so even, that's practically the issue. Publitio, we host them on the automator, but they're really like an iframe and they're hosted on Publitio. Publitio says they don't have a way to do this. And that's what I thought was just like, damn, like this tool is you know downloading it faster and or and well and then plays it at a faster speed which is just incredible right which is great so this is the name of the tool global speed uh we are using one by a person called polywalk that's the name of the well the polywalker right that's the person who developed it and in uh, we found one in firefox by him as well so looks like he's the same guy creating it for both and we're referring to this one. There might be others out there that do something similar, but we're referring to this one specifically. And basically, once you add it to Chrome, let's go ahead and move this out of the way here. So let me, what you would get is an icon here that I have pinned. So if you don't have it pinned, it would be hidden under your the list of icons here. But if you want it always outside, just pin it so that you can see it. And right now, it just allows you to set the speed globally for any video that it supports. And when I looked at the list of videos that it supports, like the, the websites, it said like nearly all of them, if I remember right. It, it just said it supports the speed for YouTube, Netflix, Spotify, or nearly all streaming so nearly all video and audio streaming services. So that's interesting, okay? Nice. And that's why in our case, it it, it worked because right. our platform doesn't allow it, but the tool did. So I was like, okay, good. Yeah. <laughs> so now uh, the way that it works, the, the tool has its complexities, but for day-to-day -day use, it's very simple to, uh, to use. If you're in a streaming platform, right? You just go and look at your video, whatever the video is. And usually in uh, YouTube, you would have to click here, of whatever those tones are, right? great video. <laughs> so here you go ahead and um, <laughs> the play about speed here to change it. And that's how you do it for YouTube, but it changes varying on the platform. Here you have a centralized way to do the same, but you have to keep something in mind. Let me go ahead and tell you the gotcha on that. So if you click here, now you set up the speed and it gives you speeds that probably some web pages don't even give you either, right? So that's awesome. And let's say that I want it at 1.5, I select it. Now all my videos are gonna be played at 1.5 globally. And if I go to YouTube here in the settings, you will notice that it changed it for me. The gotcha here is that if you go to YouTube and try to change it, it will be reset back to the 1.5, which is if you forgot that you have that extension, it might be a little bit tricky. Like, why is it not working? Well, because the extension, even if you try to reset it here, it's just going to go ahead and put it back to whatever you have up here. So changing it is as simple as just going back here, selecting the speed that you want. So those are some presets. If you want a number that is between the presets, you can use these arrows down here to kind of like modify the number, like have a little bit more uh, control. I found it weird. So these two- Way just, too granular. Like very granular, it's really weird. But uh, you can set that up, which is the other thing that we're gonna talk about. Now, interestingly enough, you can set the speeds 
based on different tabs. So if you have multiple tabs open that can be controlled, you can set the speed on this tab to be one thing and on the other tab to be something different. So you can do that, but whatever the global value is, is gonna affect all websites. And that's something that you have to keep in mind. Now, there are ways to manage that. So that's where you would go to the options. And to Joe's point, like there are too many options out here. I wouldn't go through all of them. I, I would, if you want to take a time, read the shortcuts, that's perfect. Set up some shortcuts for yourself. Um, and I think for now, the only option up here that I would kind of like note is this one. Speed changes pitch. What I understand by this is that if you make it faster, you know that usually it sounds like a chipmunk or something like that. Probably right. if you set this up, um, it tries to counter that and it would sound normal, but I'm not really sure. I, I think it's it. reverse of what you, I, I could be wrong. Okay. But, you know, it, um, it, I haven't it, tested it. So yeah, but that's the one that kind of like caught my eye right away. Like, oh, that's interesting. Now down here, this is the most important one. You can create URL rules. So while you cannot say like, I'm going to set 1.5 and then now I just don't want Netflix to be affected by this. Here in this view, you cannot do that. But when you go to the op options, you can create a rule. You will have to put uh, whatever the conditions are. This is a really weird uh, UI. This was not something that I found easy to, to follow, right? Because you create a condition, so it's equals or contains or starts with, and then you look for the website, you, I don't know why copy or paste or whatever, whatever that is. And uh, I don't know how this really works. Oh, I see it there, right? Oh no, I, so, so I created it, so it's there. And then that, that's the condition that, the number here tells you how many conditions you have. So for this one, you set the speed to one. So that means even if I change my global speed to 2.5, when I go to Twitch TV, Twitch TV is not gonna be affected because I set it to one. And it seems to be that I can create multiple conditions uh, for multiple websites, Netflix. And I would assume that now when I go out here is two, you see, so I have two conditions. It's a weird way of doing it, fine. It has these things only check during the initial payload, only apply once per tab. I don't know. Again, it's too much granularity in the ways that you can we use this. But if you're looking for, okay, only on YouTube, I want this speed and only on Netflix, I want another, another speed, this is where you would do that. Of course, they have their, their help for providing feedback and so on. And the... UI, if I remember right, this is what, what you had, Joe. Here, you can modify the presets of how many buttons they're gonna be shown up here. And probably you can modify the numbers here about how they behave and so on. So again, a lot of flexibility. The use case for this is very simple, right? It's just for, hey, I just want to manage the global speed on all tabs and all websites or create specific rules for given websites, that's it. So, oh, it looks like you can enable or disable it temporarily here. So if you don't want it to be affecting your stuff, just disable it and now everything is the normal playback, I would assume. Let me see what happens here. If I go back here and set it to normal, yeah, it will not be reset, you see? <laughs> that's great. So basically, as you can see, the tool, while it is, it has a lot of options. It's very simple to manage. And in cases where you're limited about, you know, you want to watch a speed a little bit faster than they have it, if they do not have a way to control the speed, this little uh, extension seems to do the job very well. Or, or if you just say, you know what, I always want to play at 1.25 as my default, right? It's, right. it's great to have that enabled so it does it for you. There don't you forget go. it's enabled because that's what I did. I, I I installed this thing. I'm like, oh, it's interesting. And I got busy. And then I came to YouTube and everything was playing at 1.5 speed. And I'm like, <laughs> I thought I had a virus at first because I'm like, look, I'll change it. And it, was, it was resetting. And then all of a sudden it clicked. It's like, oh, wait, I have this extension. Right. Yeah, very cool. So 
There you go. Um, check it out. Yeah, and kudos to him for making such a, an advanced, sophisticated tool and giving it away. Like that, that's impressive. All right. If you learned something here, please like the video. It really helps us out. We um, publish videos several times a week, and we do, we love to learn how to work smarter and harder. And so, since you know we have a YouTube channel, maybe you're a subscriber. If not, subscribe. But um, clearly, this is something that I think a lot of our subscribers are going to love because we drone on forever as AS. Yeah, that's right. All right, cheers. Bye, guys.